It's interesting because on Monday, you had almost a 3% correction, and it's normal to have a correction during a bull market, right? I mean, if you look at 56% of the time any given year, you're going to get a 10 to 15% correction. And you would think at this point, we'd probably see something like that just because the market's been so strong. Um, but I think the, the stronger force here, Zach, is you've got so much cash on the sidelines, right? I mean, the government's just printed trillions of dollars. Um, you're starting to see wages go up as the economy starts to reopen again. And if you look at profits, I mean, the beats, we've had 88% of companies beat. The normal beat is like 72 to 75%. So I think it just speaks to that you know, the data is going to continue to come in better and better. I think your biggest risk here, because everyone is starting to be concerned about a sell-off, if you look at sentiment right now, and I talk about this in my podcast a lot too, that your bigger risk here is not being wildly bullish. Um, you know, with the economic data coming in stronger, earnings coming in stronger, your bigger risk here is there's so much money has to get into this market, it could just virtually melt up here as opposed to a meltdown, which a lot of investors are concerned about right now. I mean, with that said, Ryan, we always joke that you're the value guy, but is this the kind of the time to put more cash to use and potentially put money behind some of these growth, name, growth names? Is that where we're going to see um, the next leg up? Well, I think the irony is um, you think growth, the market economy is growing, earnings are growing, growth is the place to be. But when you start looking at valuations and even start looking at performance going all the way back to last uh, September, Kiko, when really we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? That's when we start to see the news about the vaccines come in. You know, value has really outperformed growth since then um, because essentially you have cheaper multiples, you have a lot of companies that benefit more from business activity picking up. Like, you know, let's be real about it. Amazon doesn't benefit more uh, with the economy opening up again, right? It doesn't really do that much for their business model. And they already trade it 60 times forward earnings. But if you're like a restaurant or, you know, Darden Restaurant Group, for instance, that owns the Olive Garden. We all love the Olive Garden. Those unlimited breadsticks. Uh, you know, a company like that last year was just cutting cost hand over fist. And now you have a consumer who's got tons of cash to spend that wants to go out again. That's where the profit growth is going to be better. And those cyclicals, which are traditionally value companies, I like being considered the value guy. Thank you. No, still have growth in your portfolio. Don't get me wrong. But money is going to find its way to where the growth is going to be the best. And cyclicals sure. are none here. Yeah, as we've talked about here too, though, Ryan, I mean, Darden, and don't get me wrong, also love the breadsticks, big Olive Garden OG here. But when you look at the stock <laughs> over the last year, up 90%, I mean, I wonder how much of that has already been priced in and kind of got ahead of where we were. And we've seen that before, maybe in prior cycles. I mean, how much more runway could you have, even if you are a restaurant that's reopening here? Or does it not matter? And that's just kind of where the money's going to be flowing. Well, if you look at multiples, I mean, it still trades at 23 times forward earnings, right in line with the S&P 500. Again, where you look at your average growth stock, you're probably between 30 and 40 times forward earnings. And you have a lot of places where surprises can be in the positive, especially when you've been cutting costs. Uh, you know, for instance, like they had to last year because they had no business. The other interesting component right now, and this is why I'm a big believer in inflation not being so transitory, and you're seeing this on the earnings calls, right? The word inflation is seeping in. In fact, it's been mentioned like on 80% plus of the conference calls for this quarter versus like 30% a year ago is like Pepsi-Cola last week. They said, hey, our raw material costs are going up. Uh, you know, our labor costs are going up. Guess what? We're raising prices on you, the consumer. So as long as the consumer is willing to pay more, and I argue they will be because their wages are going up, that's going to be great for earnings and great for margins, especially when you're talking about restaurants, again, or any sort of company that benefits from the fact that we're outspending money again.